You know, every single year, the role of the help desk, the service desk, sysadmins is changing. So here you've got level one, level two, level three of IT support, right? They provide access to all of your server management, your support of your staff and a whole bunch more. And you know what? As technology changes, these roles change. So you, if you are in one of these three roles, you're wanting to jump into one of these three roles, you need to know what the cutting edge technology is so that you can be prepared for the future and be great at your job. Before we do get into that, hey, my name is Emilio. I release tech videos, I love it. And hey, if you like this channel, I would love it if you also click on the subscription button, click on the bell. A lot of you are not subscribed and I would love it if you do because it helps me to grow my channel and lets me know that you enjoy my video. So please do that. Now here's the thing, every single company to some extent is gonna need support by IT professionals. People like you, people like me, they need people to come and help them. And uh, there's level one, there's level two, and there's level three. There's this thing called an ITIL, which is sort of like a process, a framework that a lot of companies use around how to set up and structure technology teams, service desk teams, and things like this. And this also loosely defines these terms of level one, level two, and level three. Essentially, a level one person escalates or you know transitions up to a level two, who then transitions up to a level three. And these roles are gonna be slightly different with a little bit of crossover between these roles depending on the company. Now, lots of companies are gonna be set up very, very differently. It depends on the industry that that company is in. Some of these roles may need to have an understanding of some of the services, the, the things that that company actually does. And it also greatly depends on the size of the business. Is it a small, is it a medium, is it a large business? This is gonna be very, very dependent on what this level one, level two, level three actually looks like. Now, this is what I've commonly found over the years, having worked in lots of different companies of lots of different sizes. Like I myself went through the level one, level two, level three, then moved myself into different roles. So I've seen a lot of crossover between these roles, depending really on the company itself. A smaller company, for the most part, may only have one, maybe a couple, or maybe only three or four IT people working inside of the business. And they're gonna do a lot more sometimes than some of the bigger companies that may have more specialized roles. So for example, a small company, now let, let's say, let's give you the example, they have one IT person. This IT person is the IT manager, but they're also responsible for level one, level two, and level three of support, and they have to do the whole lot. They have to manage the whole lot because that company cannot afford, or they're not big enough to be able to go and grab a huge team of IT pros to be able to provide the service. While a much bigger company, well, hey, they've got a much bigger budget They've got a lot more money to spend so they can afford to go and get a lot of IT people. But here's the thing, what I have found, generally people who have worked in smaller businesses, uh, they're a lot more exposed to lots of technology. So they are a little bit more higher in demand because they've got exposure to a lot of the technology stack. Well, sometimes you can get what's called boxed in. You can get boxed in into your specific niche when you are working in a bigger company. Like if you're working in a bigger company and uh, you are just the systems administrator for storage, all you do is storage engineering. You're working on SAN and NAS devices and that's all you do. You may never get exposure or be able to play with servers, with networking. You may not be able to play with uh, helping out staff. You may not be able to play with cloud technologies because you're the storage person. All right, so you get a little bit boxed in from that perspective. Well, in a smaller company, well, you're the server person, you're the storage person, you're the cloud person, you're the networking person, you're the security person, you're the person providing help desk support to the staff in a business. You're doing the whole lot. So you get a lot more exposure across the entire technology stack, for the most part anyway. Now, let's define really quickly level one, level two, level three, and then we'll talk about, I think the important part is what are the new things, what are the new skills that I think that you should be getting if you are in these areas or you're thinking about getting into one of these areas that's going to change over the next 12 24 months because 
the role is changing. The role is evolving because technology is changing and evolving all the time, right? There's all these new technologies like AI, there's machine learning, right? Like what does this thing even look like? It's really, really full on. The world of cybersecurity is a really scary place. And then the whole world of data and how data plays into this and getting the most information out of your data, how the business uses your data. We'll talk about that and some other roles in a little while, but let's firstly define traditionally what a level one, level two, level three is. Well, level one, traditionally, is somebody who's like a help desk, service desk person. Maybe they're straight out of university or they've just got themselves a degree and they're starting off in technology. Now they're gonna be responsible for all of the day-to-day -day IT queries that are coming in from staff. There may be a ticketing system in place, a ticketing system for uh, like staff that can actually log tickets and things like this. And they have to get on top of those tickets and resolve queries of staff. They have to call them, they respond to them on Teams, they remote into their computers, they provide some basic support. They have to have an understanding of Active Directory, a basic understanding around how to do some basic troubleshooting from a tech perspective. It's a really important skill to have. With this, they have to have good technical skills, at least from a basic perspective, but they also need to be able to communicate quite well because they're gonna be talking with people, potentially with people across the business at all different levels of the business. Sometimes a level one person may need to go out to the floor and actually go and help people, help staff directly. Not always the case. A lot of the time, they're just gonna be at their desk on the phone, responding to tickets, responding to queues, responding to tickets in a timely fashion, right? They may have these things called SLA, so they have to hit certain deadlines, certain time frames to be able to resolve a ticket. Now they're also gonna potentially then be escalating things up to somebody who's in a level two position. So let's say a level one person cannot resolve the query, a level one person cannot resolve the thing that's gone wrong. They then escalate it up to a level two person. Now a level one person may also be responsible for just day-to-day -day monitoring, troubleshooting of the backend network. So for example, at the end of the day, there may be some backups that run, backups against servers, right? There may be some alerts that get triggered from your networking, your server devices, and they may get thrown into a ticketing system and the level one person may be tasked with just taking a look at that. What is it? What actually happened? If they can fix it, great. If they can't, then they escalate it up to a level two or maybe into a level three perspective. So level one, basic technology skills, and they're gonna traditionally gonna be building themselves up to become more of a level two person. Now a level two person is now gonna be a little bit more hands-on. You've got desktop analysts, techs, you've got support analysts, IT technicians, like that. they can go by various names, right? This is somebody who's now a little bit more hands-on. They know the tech better. They can get dirty with Active Directory. They understand how to open up a computer and know all the bits inside of the computer. They may have some basic responsibilities from a server perspective, actually maintaining and checking out what's going on inside of a server to make sure that it's working well. They're also gonna be heavily involved in the ticketing system. Now, although the level one person may also get involved in some basic Active Directory side of things, they may also get involved with uh, you know, installing and troubleshooting software and applications on people's computers, this may now fall into the lap also of a level two person where maybe a level one person can't resolve the issue. A level two person is now responsible for going and getting the thing done, going and fixing this application or software issue that has happened. They're a little bit more advanced. New staff coming on board, people leaving the business, doing onboarding, offboarding, building new PCs, setting them up with the back end, with like Intune, maybe if they're using Microsoft 365 to push out images, to deploy software. They may be responsible for making sure that patches are actually being deployed against computers, making sure that the basic security is in place across these systems. And then from level two, they then get escalated up and jump up to a level three role. And level three becomes a little bit more complex. A level three role is now systems administrators, system engineers, networking people, you've got storage people, cybersecurity people, cloud people. There's lots of roles when it comes to a level three perspective. A level three person, let's, I mean, if we talk about systems administrator, systems engineer, well, they're now involved with servers. They're now involved with maybe building servers, deploying servers, troubleshooting servers, securing servers, patching servers, backing up servers, the setup of Active Directory, dealing with domain controllers, 
dealing with the cloud services of Azure, of AWS, right? And that also has a little bit of a mix in with maybe somebody who's like a cloud engineer, somebody who's now responsible for all of the cloud technologies, for architecting all of the cloud stuff, AWS, Azure, et cetera, as well. Storage people, NAS and SAN devices, network attached storage, storage area networks, making sure that the RAIDs are set up correctly, the storage pools are set up correctly, the disks are racked, the disks are all set up as they need to be. Then your networking people, network admins, network engineers, looking after switches, looking after routers, looking after firewalls, looking after load balances, making sure that proxies are set up correctly. You got people who focus on virtualization, virtualization, containers. We're talking about Docker, VMware, Hyper-V, Proxmox, Citrix, all of these virtualization platforms, building now virtual machines, building containers, and then the whole world of cybersecurity, right? This is the space where now that you've got cybersecurity experts who have to have sometimes a good enough overview across all of the tech stack to be able to secure things correctly. Know about systems, know about networks, know, around, know about cloud, about storage, and how to secure those environments very, very well. Now, of course, all of these technologies nowadays, they can be all on-premise, on-premise being that they're in data data centers, they're in server rooms that are physically inside of the offices, physically inside of sites, maybe in some data centers that are remote, okay? But then now you've got all of the cloud stuff. You've got the same sort of stuff that is now all virtualized and is on the cloud. You've got SaaS solutions, software as a service. You've got IAS solutions, infrastructure as a service. You've got platform as a service. You've got all these as a services things that are now cloud-based. And people that are generally in a level three perspective need to understand the cloud components quite well. Here's a little sneak peek around what the future holds. The cloud's only gonna get bigger. So if you have been focused a lot around the on-premise stuff, great, you know the basics of on-premise technologies. You need to now look at how do you transition? How do you use that stuff in the cloud context? Yeah, very, very important. Now, very closely associated with a level three role now we've talked about level one, level two, level three, but then you've got this whole other world of the development side of things. And okay, this video is not talking about developers, front-end, back-end developers, full stack. We're not talking about those sort of people. We're now focused on this little intermediate position, which is around the DevOps, right? DevOps development and operations. Lots of companies nowadays, you're not gonna see this as much in smaller companies, but as long as you move into medium, larger businesses, DevOps is like the thing. And DevOps is the thing that if you don't know enough about DevOps, get to know a little bit more about DevOps. And DevOps is really a group of individuals, or at least it's a framework, we should say, around how to have developers and operations people. Now, when I say operations people here, I'm talking about people who are day-to-day, -day, BAU, level three techs, engineers, admins, yeah? They're doing the day-to-day -day stuff. They're the operations people. How do they work together with the developers? Because for a long time, they used to be two separate teams working on their own thing. How can we now make them work together better? So there's a little bit of a cycle taking place where a developer does their thing, the operations people are doing their thing, checking things, and it just it's a continuous little movement between developers and operations. And if you throw into the mix there, Security is how can DevSecOps, development security operations, work together in this cycle to get the most out of the solution, right? So this is very, very important. So this is where we've got now DevOps engineers or DevSecOps engineers that have experience on the development side of things, but also have an experience on the systems admin, system engineer, network engineer side of things as well. And this is one thing that's only gonna to continue to grow. And what I found is having worked with lots of sysadmins throughout my years, through a lot of, lot of networking people, they don't understand the development world. A lot of companies nowadays are looking for people who can sort of slot into this little DevSecOps container where they have exposure to both side of things. And they're gonna be very, very popular, very, very sought after. So get to understand that area a little bit better. So apart from this, there are a few other things that are growing, right? Things that are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. The world of AI, the world of machine learning. This is taking off, okay? This is going to change the way that we work as technology professionals. A lot of the day-to-day -day stuff that maybe sometimes a level one person was doing, providing basic IT support for staff, AI can do that. AI can provide the answers to staff nowadays. I can't log into my computer. AI tells you how to log into your computer, perform some basic troubleshooting. So if IT people are not on top of AI, 
they're gonna fall behind. Because hey, it's a little, it's a bit daunting, right? Because when a new technology comes out, people start freaking out going, ah, oh, my job is going to be lost. And some jobs are gonna be affected as a result of this. But then there's also all these new opportunities that come out of these new technologies. So if you're not on top of making sure that you're on top of AI, how it works and how you can use it in your workflow of how you work, you will fall behind. So this is one area that's only going to grow. So learn more about AI and how it will benefit you as a IT support engineer, as an analyst, whatever your role is. With that, the world of data. How is data changing? More and more companies have got more and more data. Data is like a big thing. Now, yes, there are dedicated roles for people who know about data, right? You've got business analysts, you've got data analysts, you've got data scientists, you've got all of these people who know about BI, business intelligence, they know how to work with Power BI. But I think if a level one, level two, level three person knows a little bit about data and how data works, good data fancy word, governance, how all of the data is structured, how it should be structured, how to get the best out of your data, you're gonna be very, very sought after. So I think more and more as we play around with big data, a lot of data, is engineers need to know a lot more about how systems and data work well together. Because really, for the most part, businesses, people, the, the staff that you're supporting out on the floor, they don't care about the backend systems as much, right? They don't even know that stuff even exists, but they do see their data. They do see the, the files that they're actively working on. So if a IT person can talk their language and help them, that's even better. And then of course, cybersecurity is that last one. We are looking at how to improve cybersecurity. Every single day, there's stuff on the news. I've ha I talk about this all the time. You need to know more about security. So everything that you do, and this is something that I recommend every single level one, two, three person needs to be doing more and more and more is security is the first thing they think about. When they're deploying a new system, security. When they're onboarding a new staff member and they're building up their computer, security. Making sure that things are security hardened. Making sure that the systems, the processes, the Active Directory side of things, the software that is deployed, the endpoint protection software, the backups, policies that have been written, everything, making sure that security is tight in all of these areas. Hey, I've got training courses on a whole bunch of tech. If you wanna know more about all of these three areas that we've talked about, if you wanna know how to get into IT management, I've got courses on that also. So go and check those out. I've got links to them down below. Give us a subscription button, click. You know, a lot of you are not subscribed. You watch my channel and that's fantastic, but I love it if you follow along by subscribing, clicking on the bell as well so you don't miss out on anything. And thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video.